Hello everyone, this is Mr. King. I hope that you all are doing well. I, for one, am very much looking forward to learning with you again. To that end, I've created some optional, ungraded learning experiences. I want to stress that again, these are ungraded and I will not be checking for completion, but I am looking, I am hoping that you will choose to learn with us. Uh, I think that this is an excellent time for us to take this opportunity to learn in a way that's different than what we're used to learning. And I'll be posting these every Monday for as long as we are home. And I imagine that we'll be home for a little while yet. Um, some weeks I'll be creating some different collaborative learning experiences. Maybe I'll do some video conferences or video lessons in different ways. But for now, let me show you what I've created this week for us to do together. This is your Schoology page. And at the top here, you'll find optional COVID-19 at home coursework. If you go here, you'll find a folder for each week. And then within the folder for each week, you'll find your learning opportunities page and a discussion board. Within a discussion board, I want to encourage you to post anything that you create for our learning opportunities. Um, and usually I'll tell you what I'd like you to post in there. And please feel free to post any discussions uh, related to those things. But also feel free to post any questions or discussions um, about anything. I want you to feel free to use that space to talk about anything that you want to talk about. I want this to be a, a place where you can come if you've got some questions and, and things you want to talk about. Uh, if we come in here to learning opportunities, you'll find the, the sheet for this week and the things that I've created for you to work on. And here you'll see a big idea question. Um, what am I asking you to think about this week? And for this course, I'm asking you to think about how can I take the skills I've already learned and apply them to unfamiliar software and situations. So far, you've spent a lot of time this year learning about 3D modeling and learning how to apply the 3D modeling skills that you've learned already to Fusion 360, transferring skills from Inventor to Fusion 360, um, making a number of different objects and getting very highly skilled in your Fusion 360 and 3D modeling skills. Uh, I'm asking you to think about that now in a different way. I'm going to give you access to Tinkercad.com. Tinkercad is a software program also made by Autodesk, and it's an online 3D modeling program. It works in a very different way than what you're used to doing. When you go to Tinkercad.com, as I'll show you in a moment, you can sign in with your Autodesk ID that you created earlier this year, if you remember it, or with your Google login. And to do that, you'll log in using your Hack12 login. So you can use either one, and I don't really care which one you do. We were going to be creating toys this semester if we were to have been in school, and we might still, depending on when we get back. But I'd like you this week to um, go to the three designs interface in Tinkercad, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, and recreate a toy that you have in your home, something you can hold in your hand and see as you make it. And I want you to recreate that toy and make it in Tinkercad. Share a picture of that with us. Um, using the interface that I'll show you in a minute, and then also email me a link using that send to button um, so that I can see what it looks like as well. The second option I'm giving you this week is if you feel more adventurous in Tinkercad, I want you to try the code block section, and I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit as well. You'll be combining coding and 3D modeling together. Um, you have the same basic assignment as the first one to make a basic toy. Make it very simple, please. Um, and you're also going to go through and use the learning tools that are included in Tinkercad to understand how code blocks works. You can feel free to pick one of these or to do both um, or to do neither if you choose. But I'd like to encourage you to at least think about these options and to learn something along with the rest of us this week. So let's take a look at what Tinkercad looks like. If I come over here to Tinkercad, this is the main page. And if you click on sign in, you'll see you get access to the Autodesk login or the Google login. I'll choose the Google login for today. Since I was already logged into Google on my device, it will automatically log me in. If you're not, it'll forward you to the login page and ask you for your Hack12 login information, and then you can log in automatically using that. All right, it's not logging me in right now for some reason, so let's go ahead and here we are. Now we're in. 
So this is a design that I've made before. It looks very similar to the box that we've been working on this year to this point. I'm going to show you how to make this today real quickly so you can see how the Tinkercad interface works. Over here on the left, you'll see 3D designs. Also circuits. Please feel free to mess around with that if you want. I'm not asking you to this week, but you can. And also code blocks, which I'll show you as well. So let's go ahead and create a new design. It gets an automatic name up here. You can feel free to change that if you want to. For the interface, uh, I encourage you to use the view cube up here because it's going to be the most simple way for you to move around. Two fingers to scroll and then uh, mess around with two and three fingers for panning and zooming. I can't use that right now myself because I'm not on a Chromebook, but please feel free to try two and three fingers um, using shift and control to manipulate things. For example, um, right now I'm using my middle mouse button to move this around, but you don't have one of those. So please feel free to try different things out for manipulating on this surface. So over here we have our shapes and in Tinkercad, you create things by combining shapes together. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute here. You also have this drop down to see lots of other types of options. For example, our shape generators, our circuit assemblies, our printables, etc. And at the top here, we have ways to manipulate what we see to group objects together, ungroup objects, align objects, and mirror objects. So to make the box I made earlier, let's bring this box out onto our grid and let's size it. I can size it by grabbing these handles like this, or I can come over here and type directly. Let's do 40 by 40 by 40. And now I have a box. So here's my box. And if I select it, I come back over here and I see the, the same options again. And I have a, a box and cylinder above that are holes automatically. But if I drag this back out, I'll see I can have the option to switch it to a hole from in here too. So I'm going to change this box to a hole. And I'm going to drag it up. And I'm going to look at it from the front. And I'm going to try to align this box. the center. Try to make it the size I want it to be. And it's a little fiddly. It's something different than what we're used to working with. But there I have my box. Um, if I want to make it down farther, I actually have to bring it down and then bring this part up, which is what I was trying to do earlier when it wasn't working. And to make it a hole in my box, I have to actually bring this this way until it intersects with my box. Eventually it comes out the other side. Let's look at it from my left perspective view here. See how deep I want to go. And then for now, these are two separate objects. One's a hole, one's a box. If I want them to become a box with a hole in it, I must select one, hold down shift, select the other, and you'll see I have two shapes selected now. And the option up here to group them. If I group them, it now becomes a shape with a hole in it. If I do the same thing with the cylinder, drag the cylinder out. Let's rotate the cylinder. 90 degrees, bring it up, look at it from here, center it in my side, and then I'm going to make this smaller. And note, I can type a number in here, so let's just type a seven, and then bring this down, type a seven center roughly up roughly and again this is not super precise for those of you who prefer precision there's not a lot of precision here i can drag this straight through the whole thing hold on shift select this 
group and not have a box with a hole in it. So that's the basics, the very beginnings of what you can do. I want to encourage you to mess around with this and try new things. Let's quickly go and take a look at code blocks here. And then um, I'll leave you be for the week and you can see what you can do. If you take a look at code blocks, create a new code block. When you come in, you're immediately going to be given options for activities and starter designs. And I highly encourage you to go through the quick start to guide, guide at the top here and mess around with the activities and starter designs first so you can fully understand how code blocks works. If you don't do the quick start guide, the activities and the starter designs, you'll be very confused when you get started. I'm going to skip it now because we don't have time for that today. Over here on the right, you see what's being made, but you don't have any options to make anything manually. On the left are the blocks of code that will make the thing that's going to be designed on the right. You have basic shapes, modify commands, and control, math, and data commands. So let's say I wanted to create a new object. I'm going to call it object zero. I want it to be a box. It snaps in. I want to change that box to be blue. I want its width to be 45 and its length to be 35. Okay. And then I want to make a copy. I want to um, repeat that. I want to do that a few times. Repeat that two times. Okay, let's see what happens. I made two blocks, one on top of the other. Okay, cool. So, as you can see, it takes a little bit of effort to figure out how to move something, how to shift it, how to scale, how to set something um, in a different place. So now we're going to repeat that two times and then move x5, y5, z0. Let's see what happens. Let's reset. Play. See? And move it over. All right, let's reset one last time here. Let's go x25, y35, z0, and play. So there we go. I had a block, a second block, and moved the first second block. So this is something that if you're feeling adventurous, I'd like you to play with how do I make this create something over here that ends up in the same goal as the people doing it in the manual 3D design. Um, explore. And then I do walk you through over here um, using the share button to create an animated GIF. So over here, click on share, animated GIF. And then you get a file that will download and you can post that file to our discussion board. All right. So I'm really excited about what we're doing together this week. I hope that you are as well. I want you to explore, try some new things. If anything doesn't work the way you want it to, if you're not sure of anything, um, please post in the discussion board. Please send me emails. I'd love to see what you create. I'm really excited about the new things that we'll be doing, and I'll be posting new things for you to try every week. Um, have fun and learn new things.